Do you feel overwhelmed by people and problems? Are there hidden issues in your life that just won't go away? Do you feel that people expect more out of you than what you can reasonably give? Do you question whether you should remain in ministry? Did you know that you're as good as your ability to manage what you feel? Isn't it time to grow your relational joy? My name is Chris Corsi, and for 15 years I've been equipping pastors to be joy starters in their communities. Today we're going to look at part two on the perils of low joy pastoring, specifically the pitfalls of low joy. You see, the definition of a pitfall is a hidden hazard. I remember a time that I encountered a hidden hazard when I wanted to dispose of some papers. So I carried them out behind my office building and I set them in a dumpster and I lit them on fire and I ran back in the office to grab some more papers. By the time I came out just a few minutes later, the entire dumpster was engulfed in flames. Uh, I panicked because there were woods all around this dumpster and not too far from this dumpster were stored cans of gasoline. Needless to say, I wanted to put this fire out as soon as possible. I tried to find a, a hose or a water spigot. There was not a single hose outside of this building, but I found a bucket. So I carried this bucket inside the office, I filled it with water, and I ran back outside to pour it on the fire. For two hours I did this. I was completely exhausted by the time the fire was out. No one told me there were hidden cans of uh, stored paint and paint thinner and flammable liquids. Even dry wood was in this dumpster. I almost burned the town down. Thankfully, I didn't. Next time I'm going to use a paper shredder. But you see, I needed water for this blaze and you need relational joy for some of the fires in your life. You see, you can grow joy and you can even help the people around you grow joy. The problem is many pastors I've met do not recognize the sign that their joy levels are low. In fact, many mistake low joy levels as uh, spiritual temptations or flaws, so they fight harder and harder with the temptations, but they never grow their relational joy. And this creates a hidden hazard or a pitfall in their life and their ministry. I remember Pastor Gary, a friend of mine whose joy levels were dropping. He was exhausted, he was burned out, he wanted to quit the ministry, his family was tired of him working all the time and coming home uh, with nothing to offer. So what I counseled Pastor Gary on was how to grow his relational joy and I worked with his leaders to, how, to help Pastor Gary. And within a matter of weeks and months, Pastor Gary's life was transformed. He started to be replenished and, and feel refreshed and he could actually be available for the people that he loved. And he started to live according to his values. And that's the power of relational joy. We don't need to give in to these temptations, but view them as signs that our joy levels may be dropping. And let's look at some signs that your joy levels may be dropping. If you spend more time than you wish fantasizing about something you'd be embarrassed about if other people knew what you were thinking. Uh, these are normally things that just don't line up with our values. Uh, or if cravings take up too much time, too much energy in your life. Or if you don't rest because there's simply too much to do, you're a low joy risk. If you tend to isolate and try to fix problems on your own. If you have a hard time asking for help, you could be a low joy risk. Or if you hide what you really feel on the inside. Or if you have the strong need to please other people and make people happy. If you do not receive correction, you could be a low joy risk. Or if your family feels like a burden by the time you get home. If you're afraid of failure so you push yourself harder and harder to succeed, you could be a low joy risk. By now you must be wondering what joy really is. You see, joy is a relationship where someone is glad to be with us, where we can play, we can rest, we can laugh. Let me remind you of a sight that you've seen many times. Isn't it time that you grew your joy with both God and people? Join me next time on part three for the prevention of low joy. And if you want to become a joy starting pastor, email me and let's talk.